successful inheritance. That's between you two. Chloe pushed Lorraine away and her voice was cold to the point of cruelty. Lorraine was just about to speak when she heard a sound. She and Chloe raised their heads at the same time and saw Emily, who had come downstairs at some unknown time. Her gaze seemed to be sizing them up. Lorraine immediately wiped her tears and quickly turned around. What are you looking at? Emily, don't tell me that you and Adrian won just because I was chased out of Cooper's. <laughs> Do you know who Adrian is? Sooner or later, you will be played to death by him. Chloe was so angry that she immediately scolded. When Emily went downstairs, she only heard a few words and did not grasp any information. It seemed like Lorraine was begging Chloe. Combined with what happened a few days ago, she felt that there was indeed something strange about it. But Henry did not find anything. At this time, facing Chloe's provocation, she looked at it indifferently and said with a smile, Miss Chloe, please find where this place is first and what your last name is. Then come and bark in front of me like a dog. You! Chloe was so angry that her heart was burning. She stomped with her high heels towards Emily, but was stopped by Lorraine, who was behind her. Chloe! Lorraine shook her head. She always felt that Emily was not to be trifled with. Moreover, their situation was troublesome enough. If they took the initiative to look for trouble again they would not be able to deal with it at all. Emily glanced at the mother and daughter and took the lead to leave the Cooper home. Chloe followed closely behind. Before she left, she fiercely glared at Lorraine. You useless woman! I will never be like you! Immediately after, she slammed the door and left. After Emily left the house, she called Henry. The conflict between the mother and daughter this morning. Could it be that something happened last night? She remembered that Henry must have been following Lorraine last night. However, after the call, Henry replied that he did not see anything unusual. That was even more strange. The more Emily thought about it, the more she did not know. She kept feeling that if she missed something, it might affect her plans. She said to Henry, I will have to trouble you to continue following Lorraine. No matter where she goes, I have to know. After Henry agreed, Emily hung up the phone. She was still worried and had a bad feeling. On the other hand, Chloe did not wait for three days. She was not the passive type. Since she had already made her decision, she had to act immediately. First, she sent people to find Bert. Then she investigated why this man was imprisoned and learned more about his background. After that, she waited in front of the house Bert had rented, waiting for him. In the afternoon, Bert came walking towards the house with a woman in his arms. Chloe noticed this woman immediately. She could see when there was malice in a person's eyes, which made her feel that this woman was even more terrifying than Bert. Bert was shocked by Chloe's appearance for a moment but he quickly reacted and patted the woman's butt, telling her to go inside. Then he looked at Chloe. Are you telling me that you can also track my whereabouts? Bert lit a cigarette. He still had a smile on his face. Chloe nodded. We need to understand each other. You can't take control of everything while I am in a passive position, can you? Oh, did you find out about what I did to get into prison? Bert's expression changed instantly. His eyes were sharp and terrifying. Chloe's heart trembled, but she maintained her composure on the surface. You broke into a house and robbed someone. After you were discovered, you injured him so badly that he was half paralyzed. Looks like you investigated everything. You are indeed my daughter. Bert revealed a strange smile again. His eyes narrowed slightly. At that time, we were poor. You cried every day. Your mother was crying all the time, too. I could only go out to find the money. I walked on the street, looking at those rich people. I hate them. 
I thought, they are so rich. Why am I so poor? I met a man. He was drunk, so I went to rob him. I was unlucky. I went home with blood all over my body, and your mother found out. At that time, your mom probably wanted to get rid of me very much, and she chose to call the police. Chloe's eyes widened in surprise. What she did not expect to hear was that Lorraine took the initiative to call the police. Since we already know each other, why don't we speak frankly? You came to find me. Do you think that we can work together? Although Bert asked the question, his tone was already very confident. Chloe did not waste any time and directly nodded. Yes. As I expected, you are much smarter than your mother. Bert laughed and reached out his hand to shake Chloe's, but Chloe only looked at him. There was disdain in her eyes. She did not intend to shake hands with him. Bert was not embarrassed. He withdrew his hand and touched his nose. He took the initiative to get to the point. There is someone following your mother now. I found out about this last night. The culprit is either Adrian or Emily. There is no one else it could be. Following her? Why her? Chloe looked surprised. Why would someone follow Lorraine? I'm not sure. The person looks very professional. He is probably a private detective. Before we find out who he is and what his purpose is, don't tell anyone, especially tell your mom. I'm worried that she will be in trouble. Bert said calmly. Okay. Chloe did not have any objections to this. She took a deep breath and asked what she wanted to ask the most. How are you going to help me? To be honest, I was chased out of Cooper's by Adrian. I can't even go there now. Silly child. Bert was amused. I have investigated Adrian. He has dirty hands, but look at him. He is in charge of Cooper's. That's why we shouldn't take the right path. What do you mean? Chloe narrowed her eyes. Isn't it Chairman Cooper, Emily, and Adrian who are standing in front of you? The chairman is half dead. Furthermore, he fell ill very suddenly and did not have a will. This is also the reason why your mother is still able to establish herself in the Cooper family business. Chloe nodded. Indeed. If Chairman Cooper had a will, then Emily might have chased her and her mother out of the business a long time ago. Right now, the most fundamental thing was that once the chairman passed away, her mother could inherit the fortune. A malicious smile. As for Emily and Adrian, can't we just get rid of them one by one? When the time comes, we will let the chairman get into an accident. Although your mother is not smart, she will not fight with you. Bert said this in an orderly manner, as if he had planned this for a long time. Chloe was frightened. According to her investigation, Bert had not been out of prison for long. However, he had learned everything about the Cooper family in such a short period. He seemed to know every single person's character like the back of his hand. Presumably before this, he had also investigated the situation. Maybe that was why he took the initiative to look for Lorraine in the first place. What's wrong? Do you have any plans? Bert suddenly asked. Chloe came back to her senses and shook her head. So what if Bert was a poisonous snake? She had to seize this opportunity. No, we will do as you say. Which one should we go and take care of first? Chloe raised her head, her voice cold and arrogant. Let's do it according to your mood. Bert had a kind smile on his face, but this expression did not match his sinister eyes. Then Emily. Chloe almost squeezed out the words from between her teeth. Her disgust, hatred, and jealousy towards Emily did not need to be concealed at all. All right, don't worry. I will give Emily a big present for you. I promise it will make you happy. Bert's lips curled up. The kind smile no longer existed. It had turned into an evil and sinister smile. Chloe had goosebumps all over her body, but very quickly, she thought that this layer of evil would soon be used against Emily and relaxed. 
What she had endured was 10 times or even 100 times worse than what Emily had endured. Emily received a call from Bill in the office. Recently, she did not have as much contact with Sheila as before. After all, she was married and had to live her own life. Furthermore, she was pregnant. She was very focused on her pregnancy. At this time, when she received Bill's call, Emily was surprised. The first thing she thought was that something had happened to Sheila. She was so scared that she quickly picked up the phone. Emily, do you have any free time this weekend? The Turner family's new project in New York City is going to hold a contract signing ceremony. I want you to come here on behalf of the Cooper family. Bill sounded relaxed. Emily's worried heart calmed down. She smiled gently and said, It's not a problem for me to go. I should represent the Cooper family. Some people are very small-minded. If they notice, it will be troublesome. Oh, right. Where is Sheila? Sheila is good. It has been cold recently and I have not let her leave home. After a few days off, I want to bring her to the beach. Okay, take good care of her. Emily was relieved. She did not know if it was true or not, but she felt Bill's tone sounded very sweet. Could it be that the two of them were getting along well? I will. Then it is confirmed for the weekend. When the time comes, will you come and support me? He asked. By the way, I'll tell you in advance that Eric from the Parker family is coming as well. Bill added with a smile and hung up the phone. Emily also laughed when she heard Eric's name. Both of them were very busy. The only place they could meet was in the car, at Eric's house, or this kind of event. However, thinking that they could see each other this weekend, she was very happy. So she took out her phone and sent a message to Eric. But she did not know that the weekend gathering was going to be even scarier than a nightmare for her. It was almost the weekend and Emily took the initiative to call Henry. Lorraine still had not made any suspicious movements and Chloe either stayed at home or went to visit the new city area. Chloe did not see anyone unusual or do anything special. It seemed very calm, but to Emily, this was not good news. It was impossible for Chloe to not find trouble. Lorraine being so strange a few days ago was not a coincidence. Emily was confused, which made her especially irritated. She could only remind Henry again and again not to miss any details. At the same time, Emily noticed that Chloe seemed to be in a good mood recently. She ignored Emily and did not have as much hostility towards Adrian as usual. On the contrary, every time Lorraine saw Chloe, she wanted to say something to her but stopped herself. Emily did not believe that nothing had happened between them. The weekend arrived very quickly. After Emily finished dressing and was leaving the house, she happened to bump into Chloe, who was arriving home. Are you going out? Are you going to participate in the Turner family's banquet? Chloe leaned against the door and looked at Emily from top to bottom. There was even a smile on her lips. Emily immediately felt uneasy. She and Chloe had always been at odds with each other. This woman did not conceal her disgust towards Emily. She was constantly sarcastic. Now her attitude seemed to indicate that she was waiting for Emily to walk into a trap with ease. Thus, she did not say anything. She just looked at Chloe without batting an eyelid. What are you afraid of? I am only concerned about you. Don't worry, I will also be there later. I will not steal your young lady of the Cooper family's limelight. Chloe took the initiative to move aside and let Emily leave. Emily looked at her suspiciously. She did not know what Chloe was planning, but she was already on guard in her heart. Chloe looked at Emily's back as she left and quietly took out her phone. When the call was connected, she quickly said, She has left. Are the arrangements over there ready? The word yes came from the phone. Chloe's smile was proud and arrogant, as if she had already seen Emily walk step by step into the abyss. Emily drove to the hotel where Bill had given her the address. She was still on guard about what had just happened, so she immediately found Bill. 
Did you invite Chloe to this banquet? Bill frowned. No, why would I invite her? Am I in a hurry to find trouble for myself? I see. Emily calmed down and thought about it carefully. Bill and Chloe had never been on good terms. He would not invite her to this banquet. But Chloe had smiled maliciously. What's wrong? Are you distracted? Bill asked. Emily shrugged. It's okay, maybe I'm thinking too much. Where is Sheila? Is she at home today? No, she's here too. Bill's expression changed as soon as he finished speaking. His gaze turned to Sheila, who had just walked over, pregnant and tired. Currently, Sheila's stomach was much bigger than before, but she was still thin in other parts of her body. She wore a pure white dress and her entire body emitted the glow of motherly love, making her entire body much gentler than before. She originally had a smile on her face, but when she saw Bill and Emily chatting leisurely, the smile on her face froze. If it wasn't for Bill's timely discovery, she would have already left. Sheila tightly clenched her hands, especially when she saw Bill talking to Emily. But that gaze was filled with love and joy, as if Bill had never looked down on Emily. Sheila took a deep breath and barely managed to maintain the stiff smile on her face. Sheila is here? Emily was surprised for a moment and then looked in Bill's direction. When she saw Sheila, she immediately went over to greet her. Are you allowed to leave home? Why aren't you resting? Emily gently placed her hand on Sheila's lower abdomen and felt the flow of life. It's good to get out and take walks. Sheila smiled and lowered her head. She secretly hid the disappointment in her eyes and the envy that was about to burst out. When Emily saw Sheila, she immediately threw Chloe's matter to the back of her mind. The two of them went to the corner of the banquet and whispered to each other, Bill has been doing well recently, right? I think the people who came today have all been invited by him to New York City. That Maxwell family member hasn't attended any banquet before. But this time, he has been invited. Emily held a glass of red wine and said with a smile, The Turner family used to belong to New York City, so some resources were still available to them. In addition, they had cooperated with the Young family a few times so they were mutually beneficial to each other. Emily had heard about this several times. Many people were discussing it. Bill was decisive when it came to handling matters, and he was not vague at all. This is all because of that person. Look, these people are constantly looking in the direction of the entrance. They said they are here to attend a gathering, but in fact, they are here to see that person. Sheila pursed her lips and consciously supported her lower abdomen with her hand. Emily was stunned. After seeing the teasing smile on Sheila's face, she suddenly understood. She smiled helplessly. So that is the reason Bill invited him? Sheila nodded noncommittally. While the two of them were talking, a commotion suddenly came from the door of the banquet hall. Immediately, the people who were waiting in a circle quickly stood in two rows. They subconsciously made way for the person who had entered. Eric was wearing a dark blue custom-made suit. Under the illumination of the lights, the dark blue color appeared exceptionally elegant. It made Eric's angular face look even more perfect. His eyes were rippling with endless light, like glass. However, this light was very cold. The moment he appeared, everyone present couldn't help but be attracted by his presence. Some of them even let out cries of surprise when they saw him for the first time. Emily smiled as she looked at the dazzling Eric. Every step this man took was like stepping on the tip of her heart, causing her to unconsciously quicken her breathing. Her entire heart was guided by him. Why are you acting like a schoolgirl? Sheila lightly bumped into Emily's arm and teased in a low voice. Emily coughed and unconsciously touched her nose and softly defended herself. I, we haven't seen each other for a long time. 
In front of everyone, there was no way for them to greet each other. They even had to take the initiative to avoid suspicion and treat each other as strangers. Emily could only keep looking at Eric, hoping that he would notice her. Perhaps it was because her gaze was so intense, or perhaps it was fate that was just so good. But Eric raised his head and his gaze landed on her. The two of them were far apart, separated by countless people. Their gazes were entangled in the air as they looked at each other gently and affectionately. Many indescribable emotions were rippling in their eyes. Emily lowered her head and smiled lightly. Her smile was calm and happy. Eric had come to participate in this banquet. The most important thing right now was the Maxwell and Turner families preparing to enter the European and American markets together. Eric took the opportunity to give Emily a hand signal. Then he went to the lounge with Bill and the rest to discuss serious matters. You and Bill, Emily said. How have you been? Emily asked after watching Eric leave. Sheila's heart seemed to have been stabbed by something. It was fierce, making her unable to breathe. So she quickly lowered her head. She pretended to tidy up the hem of her dress. When she raised her head again, other than her slightly pale lips, everything had returned to normal. Okay, it's no different from before. At first I thought you guys were going to quarrel every day, but now it seems that it's very harmonious. You are, don't you want to tell Bill who the child belongs to? Sheila was stunned for a moment and then shook her head. No. Okay, in any case, you have a plan in your heart. Emily smiled and did not want to continue on this topic. Coincidentally, at the same time, some other people at the banquet were walking toward them. Other than coming to cling to the Parker family, the most important purpose of these people was to build a good relationship with the Turner family. Sheila was the only daughter of the Young family and also the daughter-in-law of the Turner family. In the eyes of these people, she was a walking resource. Who would let her go so easily? Sheila, your belly is already so big. When are you due? Let me tell you, you don't have to worry about formulas. I've arranged everything for you. I guarantee that the baby will eat better than any baby in the world. You don't have to worry about school. I've already arranged it with my husband. You guys can come to me directly when the time comes. Among this crowd, there was no lack of people who were full of disdain when they had attended their wedding. At this moment, it was as if they had changed. Emily was pushed out by the crowd and stood beside watching Sheila. Ever since she got pregnant, Sheila had become much milder than before. She was not as cold as she once was. But now, facing such a group of people, the smile on her face instantly disappeared. I'm sorry, everyone's voices are too much for me right now. I need to rest for a moment. Sheila's words were straightforward and did not leave any face. Sheila, we also want to arrange the best for your baby. This is our intention. Someone else could not help but say. Seeing that the situation was about to go downhill, Emily put down her wine glass and squeezed into the crowd. She said with a smile, Sorry, everyone. Sheila's pregnancy makes her very tired. It is easier to get irritated than usual. Don't mind, everyone. She doesn't have any other intentions. Dirty people. Who are you? One of the elders could not stand Emily and immediately retorted. Sheila's expression changed, and she was about to lose her temper, but was held back by Emily. Who is she? Let me tell everyone. At this moment, a voice suddenly came from behind the crowd. Everyone looked back and automatically made a path. Chloe walked out from the crowd. She was wearing a black dress with a skirt full of diamonds. Just like her makeup, it was very overdone. What are you doing here? Men, get her out! Sheila felt uneasy when she saw Chloe arrive, especially when she saw the strange smile on her face. So she quickly called for security, wanting the security guards to get Chloe out. Don't worry, Miss Sheila. 
Those who are here are all guests. Moreover, I brought my invitation with me. Why should I be chased out? Could it be that you treat their guests like this? Don't forget your dignity. Chloe smiled calmly and stood in the middle again. She continued, But I'm not surprised. Sheila, you and Emily have such a deep relationship. No wonder you have become like this. What do you mean? Emily could not help but open her mouth. Emily knew Chloe was up to something when she saw the expression on her face at the house earlier. It was just that she had no idea what Chloe had planned. Chloe did not look at her, but instead turned around and said to the people present, Everyone has heard of this lady from the Cooper family, right? She is the woman who killed her fiancé's ex-girlfriend. She was in prison for five years. At this time, almost everyone at the banquet was attracted by the commotion. Everyone formed a circle. At this moment, everyone's eyes were fixed on Emily at the same time. Where's security? Men, chase this crazy woman out! Sheila protected Emily and hurriedly called for help. Emily held Sheila's hand and softly comforted her. Don't worry, don't forget the child in your belly. That is the most important thing. The security guard quickly walked over and pulled Chloe's arm to escort her out. At this moment, Chloe seemed to be about to go crazy as she shouted. Does everyone not want to know what this woman is like? How does she have the nerve to stand here? How can she still have the face to stay at Cooper's? A filthy person like her should go to hell. Hey, don't take her away. We want to know more. My husband still wants to do business with Cooper's. What's wrong with Emily? Is there anything else besides killing people? Security, don't move. I know Chloe. She is the successor of the Cooper family business. She might know something. Almost everyone stood on Chloe's side. Someone had already stopped the security guard, and they were using the advantage of numbers to surround Chloe in a safe area. They did not want to know the truth, but wanted to gossip and watch a good show. Emily knew that Chloe had taken the initiative in the current situation. Sheila, who was beside her, was trembling in anger. Emily had to comfort her first. Sheila, relax. Don't worry, this is no longer able to hurt me. Moreover, Bill and the others will come over soon. Chloe had a cold smile on the corner of her mouth. To be honest, I didn't know my sister had such a vicious heart. She killed someone and went to prison. Now that she got out of prison, she can still attend the banquet so openly. She must have forgotten that she took a life. Emily tightly knitted her brows. She kept feeling that this was not Chloe's ultimate goal. Sure enough, Chloe quickly said, However, I also recently found out that this sister of mine, who seems to be well-dressed, actually looked like that in prison. What did she look like? Did she get beaten up? Could it be that something else happened? Could it be that she has killed someone again? Chloe smiled coldly. She looked at Emily's face. She had never felt so happy in her heart as she did now. I won't say any more. Let this old friend of my sister come out and talk. After Chloe finished speaking, she moved to the side and a woman immediately walked out from the crowd behind her. It was Kylie. The moment Emily saw Kylie, her body trembled and she almost fell. When Emily first came to prison, she cried every day. She even looked down on us people who were there with her. Even after going to jail, she still thinks of herself as a lady. Kylie was not tall, but her triangular eyes revealed much evil. Her entire persona seemed to have crawled out from hell. The person around her unconsciously took a few steps back, wanting to get away from her. So, in the first three years, Emily was beaten up quite a bit. There were many ways to bully people in prison. I just want to ask Emily, do you still remember those things on your bed? Do you remember being pulled into a corner without surveillance and being beaten up? Do you still remember how you crawled back to your bed? Hey, you might not remember, but I remember it very clearly. 
At that time, you were covered in wounds, and you were scolded and scolded. You were so scared that you didn't dare to fight back. Later, when you saw us, you were so scared that your legs went soft. You knelt on the ground and begged desperately for mercy. <laughs> I want to laugh when I think of it now, Kylie said, covering her mouth and laughing a few times. Everyone heard it. How could such a person have the face to show off? Now you are discussing business. Just as Chloe finished speaking, the other people looked at Emily. So that's how it is. They were all treated that way. If it was me, I would have gone crazy long ago. I wouldn't dare to come out to a banquet like this. Doesn't she feel ashamed? I heard that people in prison are tortured ruthlessly. Drinking urine is a small matter. Emily would probably do that too. That is so disgusting. I don't want to be with such a dirty person. I feel like the air is dirty when she's around. I met her at a party before. At that time, she was wearing a very expensive dress. Now that I think about it, what if it's expensive? She's a murderer, and she stayed in such a dirty prison for years. Huh, <sighs> I feel creeped out when I think about it. The voices around her entered Emily's ears. They carried the fiercest questioning and pulled her back to those terrible five years. Rumor has it that... When Emily first entered prison, she was not afraid. She always felt that she was still Emily, who would be taken care of by her father. She did not know how to look at her face, nor how to lower her head. So she offended Kylie, who was already a tyrant in prison at that time. She began to be bullied for three long years. There would always be people spitting saliva on her food, and the water that she drank would always be mixed with strange things. There would always be dead bugs and rats on the bed, sometimes even live ones. Harsh words were common, and being dragged into a corner to be beaten up was something that happened every day. At first, she was not harmed. The more she was not harmed, the more she resisted. The more she was beaten, the worse she was beaten. However, she was unwilling to accept it, even if she resisted her death she wouldn't have given in to such humiliation. Until she found out that she was pregnant and everything was different. To protect the child in her womb, she could only endure the harsh treatment and would do anything they demanded she does. Learn to bark like a dog, kneel in kowtow. These were all ordinary things. Those memories that had been deliberately hidden inside her mind crawled out now. They were like a bloody demon that opened its mouth and was about to swallow her whole. Emily felt like every cell in her body was trembling and screaming in pain. The eyes of these people were like knives. They were stabbing all over her body. Even though she was covered in blood, they still wouldn't let her go. Emily? Sheila shook Emily's arm and her eyes were full of concern. Are you okay? Emily was suddenly brought back from her nightmare. The surrounding noise suddenly entered her ears, and her body trembled violently. Luckily, Sheila was quick to pull her back. Chloe and Kylie stood opposite her. The expressions on their faces were both proud and arrogant. What they were most happy about was seeing Emily completely collapse, especially Chloe. When she heard that Bert had a gift for her, she did not believe it. Seeing Kylie and hearing Kylie's words, she was very excited. So Emily was not the kind of person who stood on the clouds. She was so dirty and was not as good as Chloe after all. What Chloe wanted to do was to let everyone in New York City know that people like Emily should return to the swamp. She was not worthy to be bright and beautiful for the rest of her life. Emily's face was pale. She wanted to open her mouth and tell Sheila to thank her, but she could not make a sound when she tried. She discovered that her body was trembling, her hands were trembling very violently, and her heart seemed to be being cut into a thousand pieces. The memories that were hidden attacked her, 
wanting to swallow her up. Everyone, do you still not believe me? Today, I will let you all see how dirty this Emily is. Chloe quickly went forward and did not give anyone time to react. She was holding a knife in her hand and ripped Emily's shirt off of her. The shirt did not have any support and quickly fell off, revealing the scars on her chest. It was a shocking sight. And your finger. Is it like that because you were hit by a rock and became disabled? <laughs> Chloe raised Emily's right hand as if she was showing off her favorite work. She laughed wildly. Emily helplessly wanted to take back her hand, but she found that she did not have any strength. Her other hand could only quickly and anxiously hold onto her shirt. Just as Chloe let go of her, she immediately squatted down to protect her body. Those dark and scary things all heavily attacked her. Emily felt as if she was at the edge of a cliff in the night. The surrounding air was so heavy that she could not breathe, and she could fall from the cliff into the abyss at any time. Who would save her? Emily was in despair and helpless. She felt the darkness around her. At this moment, Emily felt a weight on her body. The moment she raised her head, she saw Eric's angry face and the dark blue suit jacket draped over him. Before Emily could react, Eric squatted down and picked her up. The people on the scene couldn't help but gasp in shock. No one had expected that Emily, who was a drowning dog, would be able to get Eric to personally carry her. This was Eric. Many people did not even dare to step forward or to say a word. He took the initiative to hug such a woman, Emily heard his familiar heartbeat. Her surroundings were once again engulfed by Eric's aura. She instantly felt the heavy dark clouds above her head dissipate. The light returned. Eric was her light. Chloe's eyes almost popped out. Why would Eric come? Why would he protect Emily? Eric, don't touch her. This woman is not clean at all. Do you know how dirty she is? Chloe was anxious. She went forward and grabbed Eric's arm, shouting madly. Eric was completely enraged. He pushed her away fiercely. Chloe fell to the ground with a plot. I gave you a chance. You are the one who is seeking death. Eric's cold voice sounded like it came from the tundra. Chloe immediately shivered in fear. He looked at Chloe coldly, with strong, killing intent in his eyes. But when he turned his head to look at the woman in his arms, his gaze became worried and gentle, as if he was a different person. How could Chloe not notice? Her heart skipped a beat and her mouth opened wide in disbelief. Director, please help me keep an eye on these two people. Eric looked and Bill immediately let the bodyguards get Chloe and Kylie. Then Eric hugged Emily in front of everyone's eyes. His coat covered her body, blocking all eyes and wounds. He left the banquet hall expressionlessly. Oh my god, did I see it wrongly? Was that Eric just now? Why did he come to protect Emily? What is the relationship between the two of them? Could it be... Don't talk nonsense. Who is Eric? How could he be related to Emily? Besides, Emily has a fiancé. Moreover, after being imprisoned, the Cooper family has fallen into this state. What does Eric think? Then what do you think their relationship is? It's crazy. Last time, that daughter of the Green family tried to curry favor with me and made me cry. How did Eric react? He had a cold expression all along. He didn't even frown. What about now? All of a sudden, everyone started discussing this matter. Some of them were full of disbelief, while others were filled with envy and jealousy. However, none of them could believe that Emily and Eric had a relationship. Where else is it? Sheila had been protected by Bill for a long time. At this moment, her heart was filled with the words of that woman just now. 
She had never thought that Emily had experienced so much in person. Her heart was in pain. But there was still a headache in front of her eyes. Most of the people who were watching the show were people in Adrian's circle. Eric was such an influential figure. Public opinion seemed to be out of control. Eric, who brought Emily home, did not care about this matter at all. He held the woman tightly in his arms and put his arms around her waist, making her stick close to his arms. He was too late to help her before. The words of the woman that Chloe brought had already been told to him. It was because of this reason that he had rushed over. But he did not expect that he would be too late. When he thought of Emily squatting on the ground with her head in her hands, Eric's heart ached. Eric? Emily's eyes were half open. She raised her head as if she was looking for something. I'm here. Eric held Emily's hand and softly replied. They were only two words, but Emily could not help but blush. She did not want much. She only wanted those two words. He was there. As long as he was here, it was as if everything would be okay. Don't be afraid. We will be home soon. Eric raised his other hand and slowly patted Emily's body, as if he was comforting a child. Half an hour later, they arrived at the Parker home. Eric slowly placed Emily on the bed in his bedroom. He gently combed her messy hair behind her ears. Emily opened her eyes and revealed a miserable, bitter smile. Do you know what she said? Eric already knew that Emily wanted to hide that stuff for the rest of her life. Would he care? Did he think she was dirty like everyone else? That she was not worthy of him? Emily looked at Eric carefully. Her eyes were filled with worry and fear. The only thing she looked forward to was the fire burning in his eyes. Eric nodded and did not say anything. He pulled the blanket away and gently removed Emily's clothes. He saw the shocking scars. Emily could not see his expression clearly, but she subconsciously became nervous and afraid. Because of these scars, the inferiority complex in her bones suddenly appeared and completely devoured her. She was so afraid that she covered her body with her hands. She almost shook her head crazily, and tears flowed out. Don't look! I beg you not to look! Eric sighed softly and stood up from the bed. The place where the bed had sunk in suddenly rose. Emily's heart tightened. She looked at Eric's back as he left, and her vision turned dark. Sure enough, he cared about it. It was true that people like him would care. When all of this was revealed, there would of course be this result. She should have guessed it long ago. However, why did her heart hurt so much? Emily closed her eyes in despair and let her tears flow freely. At this moment, her face froze. That familiar aura surrounded her again. Emily opened her eyes in surprise and saw Eric who had appeared again. What are you thinking about? Eric held a towel in his hand and gently wiped the tears from Emily's face. I... I thought you left. Emily's face was full of disbelief. She grabbed Eric's hand, afraid that he was just an illusion. Are you stupid? If you are here, where else would I go? I just brought you a towel to wipe your tears. Eric lowered his head. The corner of his mouth curled up slightly. His eyes were glowing brightly. There were so many emotions in them. The tenderness and love in them were as deep as the sea. I thought you would despise me as those people do. Emily's voice was very soft. Her voice was trembling, and she was extremely afraid. Why would I dislike you? Eric sighed deeply and put the towel to the side. He held Emily's hands tightly. I just regret not knowing you earlier. I could have protected you. I wouldn't have let you get hurt. Emily, my heart hurts when I think about what you went through. I wish I could destroy everyone. Eric's voice was very low. 
When he said these words, his eyes were always on Emily. But I know we cannot go back. I was unable to participate in your past. But what I can do is face those things with you now. If you don't want to talk about it, I can wait for the rest of my life. When you want to talk, I will always listen. But I will never dislike you. I will only accompany you. So don't think too much about it, little fool. Eric spoke very slowly. Emily was immersed in his gentle eyes. Every word of his was like the most precious medicine, healing all the wounds on her body. The restlessness, uneasiness, fear, shadows. At this moment, they all dispersed. Emily suddenly sat up and went into Eric's arms. Like a child who had finally found a home, she cried. Eric raised his head and rubbed her on her back. Emily did not know how long she cried, but she felt embarrassed. She took a deep breath and got up from Eric's arms, wiping the tears from her face. Eric rubbed her head and lifted her shirt, looking at the scars on Emily's body. His eyes suddenly became dark and deep. He raised his hand and slowly stroked the scars. Emily raised her neck and took a breath. For some reason, Eric's hand was very cold. However, at this moment, the cold hand quickly left. Immediately, a hot breath sprayed on her skin. Emily's eyes widened in surprise. She lowered her head and saw Eric kissing her scars. Her heart heated up, and her eyes turned slightly red. Is there any other injury? Eric looked up and asked softly. No. Emily shook her head. Then she thought of something and said, There are burns on my back. Uh, I have a lot of injuries. Burns? Eric's expression suddenly became serious. Could it be that they are also from prison? No. Emily quickly waved her hand. The burns were from six years ago. At that time, I saved someone. Speaking of this matter, Emily herself felt that it was a little strange. Moreover, the reason at that time was stupid. It was as if she was telling herself how ridiculous it was for her to have loved Adrian so desperately back then. Therefore, this matter had always been hidden in her heart. At this time, facing Eric, Emily sighed and said in a low voice, At that time, I was in a rush to celebrate Adrian's birthday. Isn't it very funny? I was naive back then. I didn't know anything. There is only one true love. She's his woman. The smile on her face was bitter. Eric lifted her chin and pinched the tip of her nose. What about now? Is there just one? Emily lowered her head and smiled. Her eyes lit up. Yes, there is just you. Eric's eyes suddenly became deep. His deep eyes fell on Emily's body. He lowered his head and kissed her lips gently. How did you get burned? Eric asked softly. Emily narrowed her eyes and thought back to the incident. I saw a man in a car accident on the way to Adrian's party. I saved him in a hurry, but because of the fire, even I was injured. Speaking of which, it was quite dangerous. Because I fainted too. I thought I was going to die. Emily lay in Eric's arms while she explained what had happened. However, Eric seemed to have lost control. He pressed his hands on her shoulders and even trembled. His eyes were complicated. Do you remember what the person you saved looked like? It was dark, and the person was injured. I tried my best to pull him out of the car, so I didn't pay attention to anything else. A trace of surprise flashed across Emily's face. What's wrong? Eric was especially excited. He exerted strength in his arms, and even his voice lost its usual calmness. Where did it happen? Do you still remember where the place is? Emily did not understand why Eric was having such a reaction, but she still tilted her head and thought for a while. Then she told Eric the address. 
After she said it, Emily noticed that Eric's eyes suddenly became incomparably bright, as if he had found countless treasures, but also as if he had lost something precious. Eric, what's wrong? Emily asked tentatively. Eric did not say anything. Instead, he held her tightly in his arms. It was as if he wanted to rub her into his bones. I knew it, Emily. I knew our fate would not come late. It was my fault. I found the wrong person. If only I had found you at that time, I would have held your hand tightly forever. This way, you would not have suffered those years in prison. Everything is my fault. Eric seemed to have gone mad as he muttered in Emily's ear. His voice was hoarse and every word carried endless regret. What exactly happened? Emily was still confused. Eric opened her clothes and saw the burn on her back again. The wound was not big, but it was not small either. It was a stark contrast to her fair and tender skin. He raised his hand and stroked the scar. His fingertips trembled slightly. You... Eric's voice was hoarse. It was as if a bayonet had jumped out of his throat. The man you saved back then was me. You? Isn't the person who saved you Chloe? This time, Emily's face was full of shock as she looked at the man in front of her in disbelief. Eric shook his head. I did not see Chloe save me with my own eyes. At that time, I was delirious. In my hazy vision, I saw a woman save me. Later, I woke up in the hospital and asked the doctor. Only one woman had come in at the same time as me, and she was injured because of burns. That person was Chloe. When I went to ask her, she did not deny it. She would not deny it. Emily sighed. The expression on her face was complicated and heavy. Back then when I woke up, I was in a hurry to celebrate Adrian's birthday, so I did not stay in the hospital long. Instead, I left after being looked at. After that, I didn't pay attention to the follow-up news. So, I didn't know. It was you who I saved. After she finished speaking, it was as if someone had stabbed her heart with something sharp. It hurt so much that she took a breath and looked up at Eric. The two of them just looked at each other without saying anything. So it turned out that she was the person who had saved Eric all those years ago. What if she hadn't left at that time? What if Eric had found her? Would everything be different? But the reality was harsh, because it's cold and cruel, and there are no ifs in the world. She and Eric still missed many years together, and those years were the saddest time of her life. Emily's eyes unconsciously turned red. An indescribable emotion was stuck in her chest. It was sour and astringent. Eric was the first to react. He held her in his arms. I've thought about it countless times. How nice would it be if I had met you earlier? I would have protected you and not let you get hurt. I also wish that you were the one who saved me. I didn't think that it was you. Fate plays tricks on people. You and I still missed each other. But... Eric looked into Emily's eyes. Now that I have found you and held your hand, I will never let go. Emily could not hold back her tears. She closed her eyes and time returned to the night of the car accident. She did not leave but waited for Eric in the hospital. There was no misunderstanding. No one pretended to have saved Eric. She did not miss out on it for the past six years. The dream was beautiful. Emily could not help but immerse herself in it and did not want to wake up. Eric hugged her and patted her gently. Emily was a person who was carved into his heart, and she affected all of his thoughts and feelings. With every second that passed, Eric felt that his love didn't decrease with time. Instead, it increased and deepened. Now he knew that his life was saved by Emily. He also regretted that he did not investigate clearly and had let Chloe take advantage of him. But he was even more glad that he still met Emily. This time, he did not miss it 
but grasped it. In the afternoon, Eric asked the butler to prepare a new set of clothes for Emily. After Emily was dressed, he contacted Bill. Kylie and Chloe were locked up by the guards. Eric sent someone to bring them to the Parker family home. By the way, don't say that I didn't warn you. Today, you took Emily away in front of everyone. These people spread the news very quickly. I reckon that the news has already spread to everyone in New York City. Think of a way to deal with it. Eric acknowledged this. He leaned against the window and leaned his body sideways. His eyes landed on Emily, who was in the living room. For a moment, he wanted everything to be announced. Emily was his woman. There is no need to explain this matter. I know how to deal with it. Thank you. Eric hung up the phone after he finished speaking. Was it really her fault? John had drawn a picture that Emily saw. Under it, he wrote one small word under Emily. Mother. Emily reached out her hand and touched the word mother. Her fingertips trembled. This word gave her many feelings. Eric rubbed her head. John will be back in a while. The two of you stay at home. I have to go out and do something. Okay. Emily's eyes were still on the word. Eric looked at her lovingly, stood up, and left through the main gate. At this time, Damon just happened to be bringing Chloe and Kylie in through the main gate. Go to the side door. Eric's short words made Damon shiver. It had been so long. Although Eric's face was still cold, his eyes rarely looked like they were now. It was like a sharp knife with poison wrapped around its blade. Damon looked at the two people behind him, his eyes full of sympathy. The Parker home was very big, other than where Emily usually entered, which was at the main entrance. There was also a side door on the west side. There was almost no one that used it. However, every time they did, it meant that Eric was really angry. The living room that was entered by the side door was very big and empty. Chloe and Kylie looked at each other. Both of them saw fear in the other's eyes. Eric was waiting for them. Like a god of death, he walked to the chair in the middle of the living room and slowly sat down. His eyes were dull and gloomy as he stared at the two women behind Damon. Eric, why did you bring me here? What's going on? I'm so scared. Chloe still had a rope wrapped around her hand. She pushed Damon away with her body and quickly fell to Eric's feet. She cried like she had been wronged. She still held one last trace of hope in her heart. In the end, she could not believe that a dirty person like Emily would be wanted by Eric. Eric did not say anything. Instead, he lowered his head and looked at her. Chloe's eyes contained tears as she said pitifully, Eric, my wrist hurts very much, just like when I saved you back then. Ugh. Before she could finish her sentence, Eric grabbed her neck tightly. Uh, Eric! Chloe opened her mouth wide. A strong aura of death rushed towards her from all directions. Eric used all his strength. He wanted her to die. She struggled wildly and trembled. Her breathing was getting tighter and tighter. She was about to lose her breath. Just when she felt like she was about to be strangled to death, Eric frowned and threw her onto the ground. Kylie looked at the situation. The arrogance she had in front of Emily earlier was now all gone. She was so scared that she knelt on the ground. She forced me to say all that today. I was forced. I beg you to forgive me. Eric looked at her coldly. Kylie was frightened, and her face was pale. No, it's not like that. Chloe took a deep breath and denied it. Then she cried again. Eric, why did you do this to me? What did I do wrong? Have you forgotten that I saved you? Chloe had no time to think about anything else. She had realized that Eric wanted to kill her. She could only use this move. Even if she had done something wrong, Eric would forgive her because she had saved his life. 
However, the coldness in Eric's eyes grew deeper. You saved me? Chloe, your skin is thick beyond my expectations. You still dare to say that you saved me. Chloe instantly widened her eyes, and her entire body trembled violently. She desperately pinched her hands, but fear seeped out from every pore and occupied her entire body. Why did he say that? Could it be that he had discovered something? No, he had never discovered anything before. How was it possible now? Chloe was so scared that her face was devoid of blood. She opened her mouth several times to explain herself, but Eric's eyes seemed to see through everything. She did not even dare to argue. Do you think I am easy to lie to? Eric stood up and looked down at Chloe, who was kneeling on the ground. His expression changed. He could not bear it anymore and stomped heavily on Chloe's body. If it were not for you, I would not have missed this much time, and you still dare to use me. No! Chloe twitched on the ground in pain. Her head was full of sweat, but she did not give up. Listen to me! Did someone say something to you? The person who saved you back then, it's me! Did you forget that you were the one who found me? Shameless! Eric turned around and pinched Chloe's neck. How dare you say it was you? Chloe's mouth was wide open. Her face quickly turned red. She was afraid of death and wanted to live. She could only admit, Yes, I'm sorry, I, I was bewitched. After saying this, Eric let go of Chloe's hand. She did not feel relaxed at all, though. On the contrary, she knew that she was finished. The truth of this matter had been discovered by Eric. Chloe trembled all over. She felt that she was not far from death. Kylie was so scared that she did not dare to say a word. Her legs were so weak that she could not even stand up. She had been in prison for so many years. It could be said that she had seen the many dark sides of this world. She had met all kinds of people but no one had ever scared her to this extent. Just one look of Eric was enough to make her shiver. At this moment, Kylie's body trembled. She realized that this man was looking at her. I don't know anything. Chloe and I don't know each other at all. She had been wronged, but she was forced to tell Emily everything. Was it her fault? Furthermore, this man looked so powerful. It was impossible that he wanted to stand up for Emily. He had been dragged into it. Eric slowly walked over and stepped on Kylie's hands, crushing them into the floor. Oh, it hurts, it hurts. Kylie screamed hysterically. She was in so much pain that her entire body was twitching. She screamed like she had gone mad. However, Eric did not stop. Instead, he used all his strength to crush Kylie's hands. Immediately, he heard the sound of bones breaking. Kylie struggled in pain. She could not bear this kind of pain. Does it hurt? Eric finally looked at her. His expression was surprisingly calm. As for what the others said, Kylie nodded frantically. It hurts. Chloe and I do not know each other. Please let me go. If not for her father, I would not have appeared here at all. I came here to deal with that slut, Emily. Oh, Kane! How can a person like you be worthy of even mentioning her name? Eric increased his strength and completely crippled Kylie's hands. Damon sucked in a breath of air. Just by looking at this, his scalp was numb. I will send people to investigate all the things you did to Emily. Eric's eyes were unprecedentedly fierce. Then I will return what you did to Emily to you ten times. No, a hundred times, he said. At that time, you will know how wonderful death is. You will beg for death. Kylie opened her eyes wide, not daring to believe what she heard. Take her away. Remember, you must keep her alive. 
Only by living can she feel the pain. And Chloe, you can't go crazy. If you go crazy, you won't have any fun. Is one month enough? Eric turned around. In one month, send her back to prison. Tell our people to treat her well. Damon immediately replied and left with Kylie, who was still struggling. He kept clicking his tongue in his heart. Who were these people messing with? They had to mess with someone who was in Eric's heart, especially this woman. After being tortured for a month, she would still be sent back to prison to continue her torture. At that time, this woman will probably know that it's better to die. The living will just be suffering. After dealing with Kylie, Eric turned around and looked at Chloe, who was lying on the ground trembling. From today onwards, not only in New York City, but in the entire country, you will not be able to find anyone who will work with you. Chloe, you walk the path yourself. After he finished speaking, he looked at her with disgust. The reason why he let Chloe go so easily was that this was someone Emily still had to deal with. Moreover, there was no way Chloe could survive now. To the proud and arrogant Chloe, what would be more torturous than cutting off all her feathers and letting her stay at the bottom of the valley for the rest of her life? Eric turned around and left through the side door. He quickly returned to the front door of the house. As soon as he opened the door, he heard laughter coming from inside. He went in to take a look. John was in Emily's arms. The two of them were looking at a painting in their hands. For some reason, Eric suddenly thought of a previous time. When he came back, he had also seen such a warm scene like this. Thinking about it, it was then that Emily suddenly became vivid. She slowly walked into his line of sight and then into his heart. He did not disturb the two of them. Instead, he leaned against the wall. His gaze carried tenderness as he looked in the direction of the two of them. Miss Emily, is Daddy not back yet? John rubbed his eyes and asked casually. Emily rubbed the little guy's head and saw that there was something hidden in his round eyes. She said, I think he will be back soon. Do you miss him? The little guy immediately shook his head like a cat that was found stealing food. His eyes were full of nervousness. Then under Emily's gaze, he felt that he was discovered. His face turned slightly red, and he said in embarrassment, Dad has been very busy recently. I do not see him at night. Eric had recently been returning home very late. Many times, John wanted to wait up, but as he thought about it, he fell asleep. When he woke up in the morning, Eric had already gone to work. The few times he missed, he was especially envious when he saw Lila's parents go to and from school with her. Emily raised her eyebrows. She also knew that this father and son were concerned about each other, but they also seemed to always hide from each other. No one said what they were feeling easily. She held the little fellow in her arms and held his tender hands. She said softly, So you miss him, right? John did not say anything. After a long time, he sighed heavily. I think so. I want him to stay with me, but I am a man. He works so hard, I can't act like a child, and I can't throw a tantrum. You are still young, and he is your father. Of course you can act like a child. Emily pinched John's nose. I can feel that he dotes on you. Unexpectedly, John lowered his head in disappointment when she said this. The light in his eyes also disappeared and became dull. What's wrong? Emily was instantly anxious. She did not know what she had said wrong. John shook his head and forced a smile. Let's continue to look at the painting. Emily immediately realized that the little fellow had changed the topic. But why? She had some doubts in her heart, but in the current situation, it was not a good idea to delve deeper. So she smiled and said, Okay. Eric, on the other hand, was in the corner. When he saw the disappointed and complicated expression on John's face, his heart sank. 
She waited for a while, then signaled for the butler to open the door and close it. The two people sitting in the living room raised their heads at the same time. Their eyes instantly lit up as they looked in his direction. Eric quickly looked at the little guy and slowly walked over. He held John in his arms and wrapped his arms around him. He said in a low voice, I have sent someone to deal with Kylie. As for Chloe, I will leave it to you. I know you have arrangements. Emily was stunned for a moment before she realized that Eric had gone out to take care of this matter. For a moment, she did not know what to say. As for what the others said, you don't have to worry about it. Eric said gently. Emily looked up and was caught off guard. The lights of the Parker house were already shining brightly, which made Eric's eyes look even brighter. His eyes, which could make one's soul tremble, were filled with love and tenderness. Emily felt like she was going to drown in his eyes for a moment. All right. She grabbed Eric's hand urgently and anxiously. When she felt Eric's temperature, it was as if a force was injected into her body. As long as you stand here with me, I don't mind what others say. Eric smiled and rubbed Emily's head. John did not know what the two of them were talking about. Coincidentally, his stomach makes gurgling sounds. There was too much noise to cover up. The three of them were stunned at the same time and laughed. After staying in the house until nighttime, Eric drove Emily to the outside of Cooper's family's home. The two of them spoke in the car for a while before Emily reluctantly got out of the car. Seeing that the car was gradually disappearing in the night, Emily's expression changed and became incomparably solemn. What did you arrange? Although Kylie had been taken care of by Eric, she still had other things to worry about. There were plenty of problems and troubles. First of all, what frightened Emily the most was why she had not known this Chloe was coming with Kylie at all. This was the reason why she was caught unprepared by them today. Henry would not betray her. The only explanation was that maybe Chloe and Kylie had discovered that she was sending people to watch them. This also explained why she had not found out about Lorraine's matter too. Emily narrowed her eyes. Under the stimulation of the cold wind, she had a bold guess that there might be someone else involved in this matter. And also, today, she was taken away by Eric in front of everyone. Presumably, she had caused a huge commotion in New York City. It was only a matter of time before Adrian heard about it. How would she explain it then? Emily took a deep breath. There were too many things in front of her that she needed to deal with, one by one. As for what Kylie said about the matters in prison, because Eric already knew, it did not affect her that much. As long as she was loved, she was okay. Then what was there that she couldn't let go of? On the way home, Emily's phone rang. She picked it up and saw that it was Sheila calling. Sheila heard everything Kylie had said. For some reason, Emily's heart suddenly tightened, and she picked up the phone. Emily, how are you? Are you home? Bill told me that you were with Eric. I was afraid to disturb you, but I was worried. Sheila's anxious and concerned words warmed Emily's heart. She said softly, It's okay, I'm almost at the Cooper house now. Everything is fine. I'm relieved. Sheila let out a long sigh of relief. Immediately, she thought of Kylie's words. Her voice suddenly became choked. Emily, you have suffered. I cannot do anything for you. I am sorry. What stupid words are you saying? Emily's eyes turned red. When she was alone, she could endure anything. If someone felt sorry for her, all the grievances seemed to suddenly burst out. The two of them chatted for a while. Emily hung up the phone after entering the Cooper house. She rubbed her eyes and suddenly felt that she was okay now. There was a career that she wanted to fight for, a gentle lover, and friends that she cared about and trusted. This made her feel that it was worth it, no matter how much she had sacrificed to reach this step. 
she was different from people like Kylie. Emily took a deep breath and opened the front door. Adrian was still on a business trip and would be here tomorrow. Therefore, Emily came back to rest. But she did not expect that there would be a person sitting in the living room. It was Chloe. The current her was completely different from her earlier arrogant manner. If she looked at her from a neutral point of view, Emily would even admire Chloe. This woman was very tenacious. No matter how many times she failed, she would always be able to stand up without admitting defeat, even if her methods were despicable. But this time, Chloe's eyes were different from before. There was no light in them at all, as if she was a patient who knew that she had an incurable disease and that she would not live much longer. Her eyes were lightless, and her expression was defeated. The moment Chloe heard the door close, she raised her head and stared at Emily. Her gaze was complicated. Shock, absurdity, fear, jealousy. All of her emotions were contained in her eyes, causing Emily to subconsciously frown. You! Chloe stood up. It was as if Emily had snatched away from her most precious thing. Her eyes were full of hatred. You and Eric are together? After she finished speaking, she could not accept it and shook her head, like she had gone mad. Impossible! How could Eric take a fancy to a slut like you? Tell me, what kind of method did you use? Didn't you have a man before? Chloe said and immediately covered her mouth. Her eyes widened in disbelief. She suddenly realized that the man could not find out that she was saying this. No, not. Chloe denied it with all her might. She could not accept that she had been pursuing him for so long. She had used almost all her means. Eric, who did not even seem to like her attention, was actually with Emily, whom she hated the most in her life. Hurry and tell me it's all fake. You and Eric have nothing at all. Let me tell you, you bitch. Eric is mine. He is just playing with you. How dare you dream of marrying Eric just because you were in prison? Shameless. Regarding Eric's matter, because it also involved Adrian, Emily avoided answering. How did you get in touch with Kylie? Chloe would not take the initiative to hook up with someone like Kylie. So what method had Kylie used to contact Chloe? Chloe was asked this question and immediately thought of her in Bert's plan. Right now, she was on the verge of going crazy. Her mind was filled with thoughts of how to turn the situation around in front of Emily. So she fiercely pursed her lips and said mockingly, Do you think you can beat me? Emily, I have all the evidence in my hands. Let me tell you, I want to take away Coopers and destroy you. So this is your goal. Emily calmly captured the most important information. Chloe's body trembled. She realized that she had said too much and stared at her. Tell me, what is your relationship with Eric? Aren't you afraid that I will tell Adrian? Emily's heart suddenly tightened. This was the most critical moment. Any words or actions she said could lead to a different ending. So she quickly calmed herself down. There was no panic on her face. What is the relationship between me and him? You can guess whatever you want. As for Adrian, you can tell him whatever you want too. I hope you will let me know what you decide to say as soon as possible. Sure enough, after she finished speaking, Chloe's face revealed a look of suspicion. What did you arrange? You slut, why are you so scheming? Chloe took a step back and clenched her fist tightly as she questioned Emily again. Emily calmly raised her eyebrows. Will you tell me? She smiled casually and looked at Chloe as if she was looking at a joke. She gave a light glance and was too tired to talk anymore. She turned around and went up to the second floor. No matter how Chloe roared downstairs, Emily did not turn her head.